So in this video we're looking at standing waves, how they're formed um, and represented visually and just a few other points to give you a bit of background information. Um, standing waves are how musical instruments produce their sound, so a guitar string vibrating produces a standing wave um, and that wave has a particular wavelength and frequency and um, therefore you can hear it as a particular single note. Um, but anyway, formation theory, we'll, we'll stick with the guitar string for now because it's nice and easy. Um, if you have a guitar string, just a boring old guitar string, and you pluck it so that you, um, maybe this wasn't the best example, we'll work with it anyway. You, you pluck it so that you send a little pulse down that way. Okay, in, in actual fact when you pluck it you're probably going to send a pulse in both directions. So let's just vaguely do that. And then those those pulses are going to hit this nodal point at the end, because it's a fixed point, obviously that can't go anywhere. It's going to reflect. Okay, so it'll be reflecting. And the same thing here, it's going to reflect. And those two pulses, um, they're going to uh, interact with each other on the return journey. And they're going to, um, basically when they're coming back in this direction, when they meet in the middle, they're going to produce a, a bit of a peak. Okay, So very roughly speaking, this is the smallest unit of what's going on on the string um, when, you, when you pluck it to make things happen. An actual fact, if I was to draw this a little bit more accurately, um, I would, let's get my eraser out, because I, um, I don't usually use the eraser on this, but let's just get it out. If I was to draw this just a wee bit more accurately, um, you would actually see just the string moving up, and if you, this is like a super high speed camera, and down again, and it would just continually move up and down and up and down and up and down in place like that. But what I showed you earlier with the smaller bits is what's actually happening um, on a smaller scale, on the, on the scale that you, um, as a matter of perception, it's not really a matter of scale, it's a matter of perception, um, because that's, anyway, Whew. Um, other types of standing waves you can get is uh, when you blow on the top of a bottle, and you have air coming across here, and you set up resonation within the, the column of air inside this bottle, um, that's a standing wave formed, and you'll notice it's a very particular note. It's because the length of um, the bottle, or the height of the bottle, depending on how you look at it, determines the frequency. Okay, so again, we're just giving background overview information at the moment, not getting into too much detail. Same with the guitar string. The length is going to determine um, the fre frequency. And you'll probably notice that uh, this, this here, if you could put a wave on it, that's actually only um, going to be half of a wavelength. Because the rest of it, the other half, if you were to continue it, would come up in a sine curve like this. Okay, hopefully that's clear. Um, so through all of that, there's a couple of things going on. Um, and let's just note these down with some, some quick bullet points. There's a couple of things going on. One is there is uh, more than one wave interacting. So there's more than one wave interacting. Um, there's reflection. Um, at one end or the other. Now, if uh, this end was no longer fixed and you just moved it up and down to send, you know, the way that you would with a skipping rope when you're trying to flick it or whipping a whip or moving a, a slinky spring um, to produce particular transverse waves, um, you, you will still have reflection of this end. Okay, um, so there's reflection going on at some point. In actual fact, if it's, if it's not fixed, you're still going to have reflection of a sorts. Um, but that's, that's more when you're dealing with um, pipes. Like th There is a certain amount of reflection that happens off the open pipe as well. The open end of the pipe. Okay. There's, there's, there's details, there's fine terminology, and we'll get to that when we get to that. But, so there's more than one wave, there's reflection, and there's interference between those waves. Okay, so there's interference between those waves as they reflect and pass through each other. The waves will add and, and subtract at different points when um, when it's a peak meeting a peak, they'll add. When it's a peak meeting a trough, they'll cancel out. Um, anyway, I've gone a little bit out of, outside of my agenda around. So the formation theory is this stuff. Okay, 
essentially two waves traveling in opposite directions that's a good point we didn't have that so opposite directions two waves let's just call it at least two okay it gets a little bit confusing when you have more than two so just think about two for now two waves traveling in the opposite direction and they interact to produce the standing wave and how the sound gets to your ear the standing wave vibrates the air particles so it's moving it's moving it's moving the whole string is moving and it's crashing into air particles and you and, and the air particles set up vibration between the string and your ear and you can hear um, its registers by moving the little bones in your ears creating little electrical impulses going all the way through into your brain really cool stuff really and um, that's how you hear your brain interprets that as sound um, sometimes you have a resonation chamber particularly on the guitar um, where the um, the string is the kind of primary source of the inf of the sound and then that sets up vibrations within the chamber uh, of the guitar itself and then this, that's a secondary source so it's sort of an echo chamber which um, art, uh, kind of artificially amplifies it moves a little bit more air and makes it easier for you to hear it it's a bit more directional too um, anyway so that's formation in theory in practice um, I've covered that a little bit as well in practice um, we've talked about bouncing off the end or two wave two pulses interacting um, but you you will <clears throat> either keep strumming because it'll wind down um, or you'll actually only have one wave this is what I was trying to get at before you might actually only have a single wave um, that's interacting with itself so in the case of uh, our guitar string we might have um, uh, say a sine wave that's traveling uh, this way and it's going to bounce off at this end and it's just going to interact with itself um, remember at the at the boundary okay there's there's going to be a um, a phase change um, let's see so this is going to uh, reflect over it's going to it's going to come up from the on the upper side on the return and you can see that um, as this continues to travel by the time this peak of the wave has traveled to here um, this uh, let's see where are we this is going to come back oh well, you can mess around with this yourself I, I'll see if I can find you some links to some good um, animations because that's actually how you can see what's going to happen but basically the wave is going to interact with itself there's going to be a little bit more as, as this moves the next step step in um, in, in the development of the wave is um, is it's going to be um, let's see if I can well actually this is not going to work I'm trying to do something I'm trying to um, illustrate a wave when you wouldn't actually see this so it's not going to work because what you actually see in the entire uh, in the entire thing is just the string moving up and down okay this is I've, I've, I've done a remedial trick uh, um, tricked myself so you're actually only going to see the string moving up and down okay like half of a sine curve like that going up and down and up and down um, looks kind of like an eye uh, but what's actually happening is um, there are two waves interacting with each other and this is why I think the people are very clever to come up with this kind of stuff um, otherwise um, we wouldn't be able to easily picture what's going on and we can't even describe what's going on because the string that we're dealing with is fixed at both ends but our sine curve is not so remember this is a model, a way to explain it, there's not actually a sine curve in that kind of way, but yeah, it's a good representation, helps us do calculations later on down the track. Anyway, as I was saying, visual representations, um, we've talked about the node at the, at the center, uh, at the fixed point, um, the middle point is an anti-node, um, position of maximum displacement, um, that's always useful to talk about. Um, what limitations do we have? I think when I noted that down to myself, that was uh, to do with the sine curve. You can't actually see the sine curve, and um, no, it wasn't. I know exactly what it was. Uh, I'll scroll down and I'll show you what it was. Um, if you have a uh, piece of something that's only fixed at one end, that means the other end is free to move. So you will have a node here, and you'll have an anti-node at this position here. So if it's free to move, you're going to have a different wavelength. So the wavelength is, is uh, limited by the position of the nodes. 
Okay, so that's really important. The wavelength is um, affected by the position of the nodes. Because previously we had it like this, because we had two nodes. But if we only have one node and it's open at this end, then we get this, which is actually only uh, one quarter of a full wavelength. You can see how that was going to continue on. Um, however, if it's uh, if you've got a a string that's got a node at both ends, instead of just having this version, you could also have, let's see, this version. So you can have um, what's what's called a um, an overtone or a harmonic. We're going to get into those in a little bit more detail as well, so I don't want to do that here. You can also have, um, let's see, one, two, three, one, two, three. You can see how I'm representing these. So this has got a wavelength, this has got half a wavelength, this has got three halves of a wavelength, so that's one and a half wavelengths. Um, and you can see the limitation is that we can't have anything that's not a multiple of half a wavelength. That's just because of how it is set up. Whether it's something open in a longitudinal wavelength like the pipe, um, we would call this an antinode and a node at the, the point there. And we would represent the longitudinal movement with a transverse kind of picture, even though it's really vibrating up and down that way with degree refractions and com compressions. Um, the so this is limited in a slightly different way. This is um, one quarter of a wavelength. You can also get inside of that. Um, let's see if I can draw this. Sure. So that's three quarters of a wavelength. Okay, because you would continue it out here to have the last quarter. So three quarters. And so this one's going up by half a wavelength each time, but it starts with a quarter. So it's always going to be um, an odd number of quarter wavelengths, one, three, five, seven, nine, and so forth. Okay. Anyway, video's gone on long again. Um, I think we've had a good introduction to standing waves. Um, I have rambled a bit. I apologise for that, but um, that's just the way it goes sometimes. If only I had more time to script these a bit better. But there you go. Intro to standing waves. We'll look at musical instruments shortly. More harmonics and overtones and scales and beats and all sorts of exciting things. Um, but later.